that God is holy. Amen. Does anybody know that God is provider? Does anybody know that God is our strength and refuge? Does anybody know today that God is a good God? Hallelujah. Does anybody know that he's a provider, a way maker, a healer? Amen. Does anybody know it today? Glory to God. Well, I know that he is able to do all things and anything. There's nothing impossible for our God. So we're going to go boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. There's nothing shy about God. Amen. We're going boldly before the throne of grace where we might obtain favor from the Lord. So, Father God, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray, Lord, that you would have your way today, God. God, that you would speak to our hearts and our minds, Lord. God, we need you, Lord, to show up in a powerful way, God. We need you, Lord, like the deer path after the water, but God. God, we need you today, Lord, to rain down upon us, oh Lord. God, we need you, Lord, to strengthen us to make it through, Father God. So come on in and have your way, God. Come on, somebody. Come on, God. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way in us today, God. Move how you want to move, God. Move how you want to do, God. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you now, God. Glory to God. We we thank you now, God. Hallelujah. We thank you now, God, for the moving of your spirit, Lord. In the name of Jesus, bless the word that will go forth, God. Hallelujah. Bless the man of God that will present the word of God today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, bless the worship, God. Move in our worship, God, like you always do, God. Have your way, Jesus. In the instruments, Lord. Have your way in us, God. Let our hands go up and say thank you. Hallelujah. Let our hands begin to clap and say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you're so good. You're so good. I said you're good, Lord. All the time, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you right now, God, that you are here. Your presence is here, Lord. Hallelujah. You said if there's two or three, get gathered in your name that you would be in our midst so Lord we thank you for being in our midst on this morning and we give you all the glory all the honor all the glory all the honor come on somebody all the glory all the honor all the glory all the honor because he's worthy hallelujah hallelujah I said he's worthy I said he's worthy. He's worthy. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.
says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just worship him all over the building today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Let's give God some praise. Don't stop your praise right there, people of God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't stop your praise, people of God. Just because a song stop, don't stop your praise. Don't shut your praise down, people of God. 
Let's give God some glory this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. He said, all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, Glory, hallelujah, Jesus. Don't ever hinder your praises, people of God. Don't ever stop your worship, people of God. God deserves all the glory, hallelujah. He deserves all the praise, hallelujah. Don't ever hinder your praise, people of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just love Jesus so much. Forgive me that I was out of tune, but I will sing praises unto my Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus. He's in the building, people of God. Right now is the time to ask him for what you need. He's right here with us. Jesus, I need healing. Jesus, I need strength. Jesus, I need to be lifted up today. Jesus, I need you in my life. Jesus, open them doors for me, Jesus. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. For we glorify your name today, Father God. For we give you all the praise and glory, Father God. Your name is above all names, Father God. Have your way today, Lord. Have your way today. Hallelujah. Surely God is good. Surely God is good and is greatly to be praised. Oh. So good to see all of you in the house of God today. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. God bless each and every one of you today. May God meet every need in your life that needs to be met. We're praying for each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Surely God is good. Praise God. First of all, let me give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let's give honor to our senior pastor, Tobias Brookings, and first lady in their absence. Come on, Bethesda, those are our leaders right there. We could do better than that. Yes. And Bethesda, right now, we know that our first lady celebrated a birthday on Friday. Let's help us say to our first lady, happy birthday to you. <laughs> Shout out to first lady. God bless you. Happy birthday. May he bless you with many more years to come. People of God and those that are tuning in with us, we thank you for joining in on us via live stream, Facebook, YouTube. But we want to see your face here in the house of God. We want to get to meet you and greet you and just see your face and say, Jesus loves you. Welcome to Bethesda. Let's invite somebody out to the house of God, people of God. Also, when Pastor puts content on the, on the Facebook or our YouTube channel, please subscribe, like, and share. Send it out to everybody on your contacts. We're trying to grow our channel so we can spread the word of God. He's pushing that in us, that it's just not here. We got to get the word out to the ones that don't know. Maybe somebody's going to open Facebook and come across it, and the Lord's going to save them. Amen? Let's be a witness. Amen. Amen. So as we continue in our series after the resurrection, 
We were talking about the events of Jesus Christ after he resurrected. Pastor was uh, dealing with the two that he met on the street of Emmaus. Now today, I'm going to be dealing with John chapter 20, verse 19 through 25. Amen. For our message today, people of God, is don't miss your miracle. Don't miss your miracle. As we live in a busy life and a fast-paced life, where just about everything we need to do, we need to make appointments. You need to see the doctor, you got to make an appointment. You know, you need someone to come out, fix something in your house, you got to make an appointment. Just about everything in our needs of our life, sometimes we have to call and make an appointment. But people of God, how many know that we have appointments with God too? We also have appointments with God, even if you see it or don't know it. God is always moving in our lives, and he's waiting to meet with us. So I say today, don't be like like Thomas, where he missed his appointment. Don't miss your appointment, people of God. And we are going to start in verse 19. Follow me, people of God, please. It says, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut. Where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and says to them, Peace be to you. Can you imagine the fear that was upon the disciples as they just witnessed the only person that they put their trust in, that they were following, that was teaching them and showing them miracles, speaking kingdom business to them? Everything that they entrusted their self in, be slaughtered, be spit on, be hit with the whip, be spat on, and then ultimately be hung on the cross to die. You imagine the fear that consumed their mind. It caused them to be imprisoned in their own way where they went to the upper room and locked their self in. The Bible says that the doors were shut, people of God. That means they were locked. They were so much in fear that they locked their self from the outside, not knowing the teachings of Jesus Christ, what he was teaching them. He already had told them that he must go and come back again. But people of God, I want to let you know that fear is like a sickness that will consume your mind. And if you're not careful, you allow fear, I mean fear to enter your mind, you will forget everything that you've been taught in Christ. It will start nibbling at your faith. It will start nibbling at your trust. Every situation in your life, you will look at it in a negative way, in a heavy way. Fear, just like the, 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 the disciples when they were locking away, locked away in the room, their mind was so consumed with fear, they weren't even looking for Jesus. People of God, I want to encourage you today, don't let fear paralyze you. Fear can keep you from moving in the things of God. Fear will keep you from stirring. It will actually pull you back from the things of God. Then you start dealing with your own mind, and then you wonder why your prayer life got weak. Then you wonder why you don't show up on some Sundays. Then you wonder why you're sitting in your house and you're agitated with your other half or your children. Because you're allowing that fear for whatever it is, consume your mind. And you forget that you're not even looking for Jesus. I want to let you know, people of God, when those times we got to fall on our knees and cry out to Jesus. And those times we got to remember our faith in him. For fear is the opposite of faith. We know that we can't operate in faith if we have fear consuming us. It will put us in our own imprisonment, in our own mind. Where, in a way, you would lock yourself away. Even though you come out your front door, but you ain't coming to the house of God, you locked yourself away. 
Even though you see your Bible right there, you walk right by it, didn't open it up, you locked yourself away. Just because you know that you need to fall on your knees and pray and you chose to stand up and go watch TV or open your phone and jump on Facebook, you locked yourself away. People of God, right now we need to know that we stand on the name of Jesus. He is our strength. He is our strong tower. He is everything we need in a time of trouble. Amen? But the disciples were fearful because they knew that the Jews were out to take out everybody that was either walking with Jesus, connected to Jesus, proclaiming the name of Jesus. So that was a different kind of fear. Can you imagine? But we're already dealing with that now. They're already trying to persecute Christians all around the world still that proclaim in the name of Jesus. But let's stand bold today for, in the name of Jesus. Keep proclaiming the name. Let's not be conformed of this world. We are not of this world. We are followers of Christ. We are children of God. We belong to the Most High. And stand and say, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But look how good our God is. No matter how far that you lock yourself away, no matter how far you push back from the Lord, no matter how far that you are not praying and crying out to him to lay everything at his feet, he showed us, the Bible says right here, came Jesus and stood in the midst to them and says, peace be to you. I want to let you know that Jesus doesn't need keys to the door, people of God. Jesus doesn't need a knock at the door and say, let me in. I want you to know that all you've got to do is say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, I need you. And he will show up in the midst of your situation. He doesn't need to make announcement. Here I come. He can show up anywhere at any time and anything in any place. I don't care where you're at. Call on the name of Jesus, and he will show up in the midst of your situation. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Verse number 20. Oh, but wait, let me go back. When you're in that situation, look what he said. Peace be unto you, sisters Leslie. Peace be unto you, brother Reuben. Peace be unto you, Ryan. Hallelujah, God. You're good, man. <laughs> I'm excited. Forgive me right now. <laughs> In verse number 20. And when he has said, when he has said, so said, when he had so said, he showed to them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. People of God, Jesus wants to show himself to you. He is not hiding himself from you today. He is not keeping himself from you today. You don't need to have doubt if that is Jesus or not. If you know, he says, the sheep shall know my voice. The sheep shall know my voice. So if you know Jesus, he doesn't need to pronounce himself. He will. Uh, <coughs> Whoa. Yes. But it says right here that he showed his hands to them and his hand and inside. There is something and uh, uh, forgive me right now, I lost my train of thought. And when he had so said, he showed to them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad. See, but Jesus, Jesus uh, uh, understood that the disciples still had fear on them. So even though he showed up in the midst of them, they weren't sure that that was him. So he had to show proof to them, hey, look, it's me. And the only way to show them that it was him, because they didn't see that Jesus was alive. His resurrection body looked different. His resurrection body was glorified. It didn't look like the Jesus that they saw before. So even he, as he showed up in the midst of them, Jesus still had to show himself to them to say, Hey, peace be unto you. It is me. He was giving them assurance. He was letting them know that do not fear, it is me that is here. Do not fear that there's peace be unto you right now, for I am the Prince of Peace. People of God, we got to know that we can come to the Lord in the midst of our storm and know that Jesus will bring us peace. 
That he doesn't have to show himself to us. We don't have to punk God. We just got to say, Jesus, come on. Jesus, we need you. And so he showed himself to the disciples just to give them assurance. Hey, that it's me. Because they didn't know that it was Jesus glorified in the body. Who knows? Maybe they thought it was a ghost. But we know that the God we serve is not a ghost. Amen. He is the Holy Ghost. We know that the God we serve is the Holy Ghost. Amen. The God we serve is the Holy Ghost. But that was Jesus' identifier that he was the resurrected body. He was just giving them confirmation like, hey, relax, calm down, it's me. But that was his identifier that he was risen from the dead. If you go back and read in the beginning of John, you will see the story where it leads to this, how Mary, John, and Peter went to the tomb. He was gone. They ran back, told the disciples, and the disciples didn't believe them. But I want to point out something, people of God. There's very something powerful about being in position. You know, fear can cause you to not be in position. Just like as the word was saying that there was all disciples gathered together, but we know that there was one missing. Thomas was not there. Thomas was not there. He allowed his fear to keep him wherever he was at. And now these disciples were keeping themselves locked away. But we know that it's very important to be in position. You need to show up on Sunday. Even when you don't feel like it, that's the time you know you need to push more and get to the house of God. You know, when you don't feel like praying, there's a reason why. You know better, you need to get to the house and come to the altar and fall on your knees and cry out to God. You got to be in position to receive the miracles of God. If you are not at the right place at the right time, there is no way that you can have your encounter with Jesus. Yes, he's omnipresent. He's omniscient. But there's something about coming before the throne of grace and crying out to the name of Jesus. Showing up to his, the house of God where the, the body strengthens each other. I know many of times I came in through that door and wasn't feeling it, but seeing the, the wild team greet you with that smile, it just did something. It just did something different in your spirit. And then when Sister Pam and them jump up here with the music, it just brings you alive and you're like, thank you, Jesus. And you just move from that heaviness and that fear or that just the weighing of down to an uplifted spirit so there's I want to push you guys there's very very important to be in position you don't want to miss your miracle people of God as we jump into verse 21 this is where the miracles start this is where the miracles start people of God he says then he says to the then said Jesus to them again, peace be to you. As my father has sent me, even so I send you. Even Jesus being uh, resurrected that day hasn't even made it to heaven yet, but he came to his disciples, disciples and showed up and he's giving them a task. He's giving them a task. He says, as for, as for my father has sent me, even so I send you, people of God. What did Jesus come to do? He came to witness. He came to preach. He came to teach. But he came to preach the kingdom of God. Amen? We are to continue that. We are continued to be a witness. We are continued just like he told the disciples. As my father has sent me, so I send you. He was already instructing them. He was already sending them out to the people. He wasn't waiting for him to go up to heaven and come back. He was already giving them the way of the goal. I want to let you know, some of you that are waiting to get it right, you're going to be waiting forever. We ain't never going to get it right. But the more we press into God, he's going to lead us and he's going to send us. But we got to continue the great commission. We got to be witnesses just like Jesus came and witnessed to the people, to the Gentiles, to the world. He was showing healing. He was preaching the kingdom of God. And so as he sends his disciples out, we also got to go out and be a witness and continue what Jesus already started. 
And like I said, if we continue to sit back and wait till we have it all together, people of God, we'll never have it all together. If we keep saying, oh, wait, wait till my prayer life gets better or wait till I get elevated. Well, you cannot get elevated if you're not doing the things of God. I used to be a door greeter. I went from that to the keys of the house, opening the church and prepping it for everybody. Then I got asked to be a deacon. You know, then I got asked to be an armor bearer. And then I got asked to be a minister. But it took time, people of God. That took in the time of nine years. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight. But I stood in the right positions where I didn't miss my miracle. I was showing up to the house of God. I was right there being a humble servant with the small things. And in due time, the Lord will elevate you. And he will give you more than what you can't handle. So do not let fear keep you from being in position. Fear will keep you paralyzed. Fear will keep you not moving where you just want to sit in the pulpit, I mean in the pews. People of God, God called us to be a witness. Everything you're learning and he's teaching us just like he taught the disciples. He said, just because I go don't mean it stops. You must go now. So he is telling us, for as my father has sent me, so I send you. So I say today, people of God, go be a witness. Go preach the name of Jesus. Go minister the name of Jesus. Go pray for the people. Do not miss your miracle of being a witness. Amen? Amen. Verse number 22. He said, and when he has said this, he breathed on them and says to them, receive you of the Holy Ghost. Receive you of the Holy Ghost. But something very important that stood out, people of God. When I was reading this, this, this was speaking to me so much. You know, sometimes in life, everything that we go through, busy with life, working, all that, sometimes I do miss church. Sometimes I miss Bible study. So I'm, I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself also. So when I was studying this, he was speaking to me at the same time. You know, but right here when he says that he breathed on them and he says to them, receive you the Holy Ghost. He was breathing them on them new life. Not that fleshly life. He was giving them new life. He was giving them new strength. He was giving them revelation. He was giving them direction. He was giving them clarity. He was giving them instruction. Without the Holy Ghost people of God, we will never understand the purpose. We will never understand the things of God. We won't know why we're going out to be a witness. We won't know why we need to pray for that person and what, what, what the power of prayer means. We wouldn't understand what a fast means. Without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have understanding of God. It's just like when we were in our, our sinful nature before we became to Christ. Nothing interested, interested us about Jesus. I remember they used to, my mom used to say, hey, mijo, and Jesus protect you. Well, get out of here. But I say that because when you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're not going to have the understanding of God. You're not going to know his ways. You're not going to know his purposes. You're not going to have his direction. He was giving them revelation of God. When he breathed on them, he was giving them revelation of God. He was giving them direction in a sense. Now you must go. Without the Holy Ghost, we won't have no direction. We'll not know where to go. He was giving them clarity. He was giving them clarity, Brother Reuben. Why are you going? Why is it important to pray for others? Why is it important to fast? Why is it important to read your word? It just wouldn't make sense without the Holy Spirit, people of God. So I encourage you, those that haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, we can do it right after service. Just let me know. Amen? But look what 1 Corinthians says in 2.14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Did you hear that, people of God? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, 
for they are foolishness unto him. Didn't I just say that? You wouldn't have understanding. It wouldn't make sense to you. In other words, it's foolish. You won't comprehend. You don't want nothing to do with it. But right here it says, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You got to have the Holy Ghost people of God to understand the things of God. You got to be filled and baptized in the name of Jesus where the Holy Ghost is inside of you to understand your direction, to have clarity of the things of God, to know the way you should go so Jesus can give you revelation so he can just have his way in you. Amen. Amen. Don't miss the breath of God, people of God. Don't miss the breath of God, people of God. Amen. Verse number 23. He says, whoever sins you remit, remit, are remitted to them. And whoever sins you retain, they are retained. In other words, if you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. them. But I want to let you know what he was giving them is the authority of God. Without the authority of God, we cannot do those things. Without the authority of God, we cannot heal the sick. Without the authority of God, we cannot go lay hands on that person. Without the authority of God, we can't pray for that person with power. Without the authority of God, we just can't do it. People, to keep it simple and plain, without the authority of God, we cannot do it. It says, <clears throat> it says in Matthew 16 and 19, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. There it is right there, people of God. That's the authority that God gives us. When they say, whose sins you shall forgive shall be forgiven. Whose sins you don't forgive are not forgiven. Somebody may say, how can you forgive sin? It's because when you are a child of God and you're walking in the Holy Spirit and the Lord sends you and he breathes on you the Holy Ghost and he gives you the authority, you're doing it with the authority of the keys of heaven and that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We can't do it with our own might. Lorenzo can't do it. I don't have enough strength and authority. Reuben can't do it. I don't care how much you pray, Reuben. Without the Holy Spirit and the authority of God, we just don't have no might in us. We don't have no power in us. We don't have no authority in us. We just cannot do it without the authority of God. He says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So when someone asks you that question, how is your prayer going to heal me? Say, I got the keys to heaven by authority of God. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. In the name of Jesus, that door is going to be open. In the name of Jesus, you are going to rise up. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Ryan, in the name of Jesus, you shall be healed. That's because God gives us the authority. When you walk in the fullness of the Lord, and when you're in the right position, he's going to send you out. And when that fear tries to rise and keep you from doing the things of God, you got to remember that God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That he is a light unto our, what? Come on. So we don't go alone, people of God. He says, for, I, for as I, my father has sent me, I send you. And then he breathed the Holy Ghost on you. So you're not going without power. You're not going alone. You got God working in you and he's going with you. And then he's going to give you the authority to be a great witness. He's going to give you the authority to bless the people. He's going to give you the authority to reach the people. So don't miss your miracle, people of God. you got to be in the position to receive the miracles of God. Do not let fear keep you in your own little prison. 
Do not let fear keep you from your appointment with Jesus. How many appointments can we say we missed with Christ? I'll be the first to say I missed many of them. But I want to encourage you today that you are a champion through Jesus Christ. And when he breathed upon you the Holy Ghost, that he gave you the power, the authority, and to be a great witness. And that everything that we are learning, everything that we are reading, everything that is downpouring from God inside of us is not for us to keep it to ourselves. It's for us to go out and give it to the people. Let's continue what Jesus came to do. He called us to be the witnesses. He said to go all ends of the earth and preach the gospel. Do not let fear allow you to miss your appointment. I want to end with that right now. And right now I just want to announce that if anyone right now feels like they need to come up to the altar and pray, and just say, Lord, I've missed my appointment with you many times. Lord, I allowed fear to come into the mind and keep me from coming forward. You know, the other day I was listening on to Lady Nett because my wife was listening to her. She said that there is somebody in our church that can interpret tongues, but they're not coming forth. I call that out right now in the name of Jesus. Wherever you're at, come forward right now. Do not let fear to consume you or keep you. Don't let them keep you from your miracles. I say right now, if you need prayer, and just let the ministers touch and agree with you. And just let them pray with you. Say, Lord, I haven't been standing up to what I've been called to do. That you brought me from the darkness to this marvelous light for a reason. Maybe you feel you don't have a purpose, but we all do. This is the time to come to the altar and say, Lord... If you're new to Christ, say, what is my purpose? If you've been in the house serving for many years and you're still sitting in the pews, come right now and tell God, you know what? I missed my appointment. Can I reschedule with you? Show up right now and see what the Lord does. Let the ministers touch and agree with you. Let the ministers just touch and agree and remake that appointment for you. You don't want to miss your miracle, people of God. You don't want to miss your people. Don't look to the side, to the left. Now, any of you just need prayer for anything that's going on in your life. Right now is the time to just come forth. Your children aren't acting up. Right, This is the best place to, the best remedy that you can give for that is coming to the altar and giving it to Jesus. Remember, when we try to do everything ourselves, Sometimes that just don't work. We need Christ in the middle of it. Just like he showed up in the midst of the disciples when they were locked in, let Jesus show up in the midst for your prayer life. He said, when two or three are gathered, for I am in the midst. Hallelujah. Jesus says, come and cast all your cares upon me. Now's the time, people of God, let somebody pray with you. Let them take whatever you've been feeling and dealing with, anything that you've been going through. Bless them, Father God. Bless those that didn't come up right now, Lord. Hallelujah. People of God, don't miss your miracle with Jesus. Jesus wants to give you strength today. Jesus wants to meet you right where you're at in your situation. Jesus wants to breathe the Holy Ghost upon you. If you need a refreshing of the Holy Spirit, you can come to the altar and get that right now. God don't look at us and say, hey, you haven't been faithful. You missed your appointment. I can't see you no more. He says, no, come, my child, for I will breathe new life upon you. He says, come now. I will breathe upon you life. I will give you the strength that you need. I will give you the encouragement that you need to move. Let's not forget right after this, people of God, that we have our 10, 10 a.m. Sunday school 
Bible class right after service. They got coffee and treats in there for you. If we could please prepare our offering. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we dismiss, let's prepare our offering, please. You can give by text B2EXP to 77977. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The ushers are going around passing them out. Remember what the word of God said, people, for as my father has sent me, so I send you. And then he breathed upon them the Holy Spirit. And then he gave them the authority to do the will of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you to those that tuned in. Thank you to those that are tuning in. We thank you. We give you just a shout out for joining us today. We say to like and share. But we would like to see you in person to one of our services here on Sunday at 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock a.m. Join us on, on, on Facebook Tuesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. Then you can come Wednesday in person. We're calling out all men to join us Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We have a powerful men's Bible study being taught by our pastor, Tobias Brookins, and also to you ladies. Our first lady is teaching for all the women that come also. Come get that word of God, people. Don't miss your appointment. Don't miss your miracle. Amen. Dear gracious Father, we bless you and we thank you. For we just thank you for this opportunity that you give us to sit in your house today, Lord. Another blessed opportunity to hear your word, Father God. I pray that it went forth and that it has settled on good ground, Father God, the hearts of your people today. Let somebody here receive from what was just spoken, Lord. Let them take something from this, Lord. For it is your word, not mine, Father God. We ask that you meet the needs of your people. Bless everybody in the house today. But as we leave this place from not from your presence till next time in Jesus name amen